Greetings, friends and colleagues. It's Sean Elvis. What do women really want? Truly, what do women want? We're going to discuss this today, so stick around. I'm going to jump right into it. I'm going to start off with a reading from the Holy Bible, uh, from the book of Romans, chapter 3, verses 23 through 28. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in His blood, to declare His righteousness for the remission of sins that are past, through the forbearance of God, to declare, I say, at this time His righteousness, that He might be just, and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus." Where is boasting then? It is excluded. By what law of works? Nay, but the law of faith. Therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Word of the Lord. I want to talk today about true love. True love. You know, Jesus said, in John 15, 13, Greater love hath no man than this, than a man lay down his life for his friends. Jesus laid down his life for us. So Jesus showed us the greatest love, you know. We all know that, you know, women want a guy that looks good. They want a guy with money, with status, with power, who's... Dependable, things like that. You know, these are things that are attractive to a woman. And guys, you know, we're attracted to youth, to beauty, to um, a nurturing spirit, someone who's kind, generous, things like that. So, more importantly than that, how do you keep this love alive? You know, when you're in a relationship, if that's all your your relationship is based on is looks and money and status. I look back at the relationship that I had with a woman, the woman that I love. You know, I can see how her perception of love was different than mine. When I would tell her I love you, it meant something different to me than when she told me that she loved me. Let me explain. Her love was dependent on how I would make her feel if I pleased her. Whereas, you know, my love for her was unconditional. Which is why today still, even after she broke up with me, even after all the hurtful things she did, all the mean things she said that hurt me. Yeah, I still love her. I care about her. That's never going to die. Because it's true love. And the reason I tell you guys that is because you have to differentiate between the two, you know. You see, on one side, you take her for an example, her love for me is dependent on how I make her feel. And, and if you don't fall in line with her ideologies, if you don't go along with the way she wants to live her life, she's going to take that love away from you. Basically what I'm saying is, it's kind of a passive aggressive way, a way to force you into acting a certain way, you know, and if, and if you don't act that certain way, she takes the love away from you. It's conditional love. For example, if you were to disagree with her on something, um, she would get upset. She would throw a fit. And her way of attacking me back was to give the cold shoulder or the silent treatment, you know? If you don't act the way that she wants you, she'll treat you harshly. She'll be rude to you and she'll think she's justified in doing so. She administers punishment. That, you know, one could argue is a, is a way of um, psychological or 
emotional abuse or even torture. <laughs> Maybe that's a little harsh. Sometimes it was righteous, I'll admit, you know, because I, I wasn't acting right all the time, I'll admit. I made my mistakes, I'm just human. But other times, completely unjustified, you know, unreasonable, you would say. And, and she wouldn't apologize for these unreasonable outbursts, these emotional outbursts that, you know, I wasn't making her feel a certain way. She wasn't feeling like she was loved. She would not apologize for this. Her overreactions were just supposed to be overlooked. Granted, sometimes she did apologize. I'll grant her that. But more often than not, she wouldn't. She would not. And ultimately, she ended up breaking up with me to sort of kind of teach me a lesson, you know? How dare you treat me that way, you know? You treat me that way, I'm throwing you out, right? How dare I have a different viewpoint in life than her, right? Friends, what I'm trying to get at is this. And we all, to a certain degree, we're going to act passive-aggressively, you know, towards other people. That's just human nature, okay? But what I'm saying is that my love for her was not based on how well she behaved, okay? I was not going to love her, take care of her, um, protect her, provide resources for her because of how well she treated me or how she behaved towards me, you know, I was going to do it regardless of her behavior. And don't get me wrong, this isn't a license for her to just walk all over me. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is this, you, you can fundamentally see the difference between how she loved me and how I loved her. And this is important to understand because it relates to our faith in God. You know, many people think today that if we don't act the way God wants us to, and, and I'll use the Ten Commandments as an example. You know, many people think that if you don't follow the commandments, God doesn't want you. God will not accept you. If you don't obey His rules, you're not going to heaven. See, that was her version of love. That was her version of God. That's the God she believes in. You know, if you don't act a certain way, you don't deserve her love. See, the problem with that is the God of the Bible, Jesus Christ. He isn't like that at all. Look, if you just read the Bible and you read about Jesus' life, you'll see that, you know, he came here. He lived a perfect life. He never once sinned, never once hurt anybody. He never damaged anything. He never even thought one bad thought in his mind. Think of how amazing that is for a second. He lived his whole life, 33 years. And never once did he transgress any of the commandments in the Bible. Not even one. Not even one time. And what did society do to him? They crucified him. They killed him. They, they, they beat him. They mocked him. They spit on him. They shamed him. They falsely accused him of crimes. They lied about him. And how did he respond? What did he do? He said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. He prayed for them. He died for them. He was patient and kind and loving, and he took the beating because he loved them so much. He loved us so much. He loved us unconditionally. That's how much he cared about us. That's how much he loved us, that he was willing to die for us so that we can be saved. You know, in the same way, I look at the woman that I love. I pray for her. I still care about her. You know, I still want what's best for her. I still want her to succeed. You know, my love is not 
conditional. It's not based on how she makes me feel, right? Because I'll be honest with you guys, you know, at this point in my life, she makes me feel very alone, you know, very depressed, very sad sometimes. And she makes me feel defeated and inadequate and, and, but I still love her very much so. You see, the point of my video is not to make myself look like Jesus Christ, okay? I am not Saint Sean over here uh, without sin, okay? I definitely transgress the law. I do it daily. Um, I'm not perfect. I'm not Jesus. And my point is not um, to show you that I'm perfect. My point is to show you that I'm trying to be like Him. My belief system is more in line with Jesus Christ. Because that is our goal. To love others the same way that He loved us. You know, He taught us how to love other people. He said, Greater love hath no man than this, than a, than a man lay down his life for his friends. So what I want to focus on here especially is, you know, the fact that our obedience to God does not necessarily affect, or let me let me put it this way, it completely does not affect whether or not God will accept us into His kingdom in heaven. In other words, you know, we don't have to obey the commandments to get to heaven. Okay, many people think that you have to obey the commandments to get to heaven. You know, you have to be a good person. You know, it, like there are many women out there who think you have to be this, 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 and this in order to be with me. You have to meet all my expectations. And if you don't, well, you can't be with me. Friends, that's not how God operates though. You know? Now don't get me wrong. That's not to say that we can just go out there and live our lives however we want. Okay? But obeying the commandments is not a requirement to being a child of God. And when you're a child of God, He invites you into His kingdom. You know, the Bible often refers to us, whether it's man or woman, as the bride of Christ. And Christ is like our husband, in a sense. In other words, we are to, sit to submit to Him just the way a wife submits to her husband. In the same way that you would expect your wife to submit and obey you, that's how we are supposed to treat Jesus Christ. Submissive and obedience to Him. We're under Him. Okay? Completely dependent on Him. And when, and when He rebukes us and puts us in our place, when we disobey Him, when we break a commandment, you know, like He commands us to do things that we don't necessarily want to do all the time, right? But we do it anyways. Why? Because our obedience to Him is how we show our love to Him, that we love Him. In the same way that a woman shows her love for her husband by submitting to Him and acknowledging that she needs Him, that she cannot make it without Him, okay? But what do we see in our culture today? What do we see in our society today, we see these women, feminist women, out here saying, No, I don't need a man. I'm a strong, independent woman. I can take care of myself. Or, you know, if she is with a man, she'll say, No, we're equal. He's not above me. I don't have to submit to him. I'm equal with him. As if she is somehow in charge of her life, you know? Could you imagine going to Jesus Christ and arguing with him? And telling him, hey, Jesus, everything you just said was trash. No, you're not going to do that to Jesus. You would be in heavy transgression. You, uh, he would rebuke you sharply. And rightfully so, because you are stepping out of your place. You are stepping out of bounds. If, if you are going to... Um, now, understand that, like, you know, men, we're not Jesus. We are not perfect. We are not God. We are not sinless. I understand that. But that's why I'm making this video. Or, you know, that's why I made the video uh, a few days ago. Um, women shouldn't be on a pedestal. Because Jesus 
is the only one who should be on our pedestal. Only he has the right to command us. If if it's when it's when you're in a relationship with with a man and a wife, this dynamic between a, a man and a wife, it pictures our relationship with Jesus Christ. You know, when a husband is loving his wife, when he's providing for her and protecting her and doing these things to love her, he's in his proper role. He is picturing how Christ loves us, you know? And and if and if he has to correct his wife and discipline his wife for, you know, if she if she uh, messes up and and you know, um doesn't, you know, do, take a uh do the dishes like she's supposed to or, you know, something like that or do the laundry and if he has to correct her, he can do so lovingly and gently to correct that. And in the same fashion, you know, when a woman is submissive and she's obedient to her husband and she's standing um, behind him in her proper role and respecting his authority over her, she too is in her proper role because she's picturing how we are supposed to respect and be submissive to the Lord Jesus Christ. You see how that works? The marriage dynamic between a man and a woman pictures our relationship with God. And when a woman is contending with her husband, when she's trying to be equal with him, and she, and or maybe she seeks to um, seeks to further her career and put her career over her husband, she's basically saying that I don't need a man, I don't respect you, you don't have any authority over me. And when she does this, she's worshiping a false god. She's putting her career above God because she's showing the world that, hey, this is what's in my heart. I am totally um, going against God. And I do not respect God. I do not respect His authority. When she acts this way, she doesn't love you unconditionally. Her love for you is conditional based on how you treat her. And how... She expects to be treated by you. You know, no woman wants a tyrant husband. No woman wants a husband who's ruling over her with an iron fist and telling her, hey, you need to do this, 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 and this. And if you don't do that, then I'm going to kick you out of the house. And, <laughs> he, you know, no woman wants a guy who's going to do that to her and, and, and leave her and not forgive her for her mistakes. And make her feel ashamed for when she does something wrong, you know. Now, don't get me wrong. This isn't to say um, that women have a free pass to do whatever they wish, you know. Just like we don't have a free pass to live however we wish. God has commandments for us. You know, remember, those commandments, they're not there for us to earn God's love or to keep God's love. Okay, God is not saying, hey, if you disobey my commandments, then I'm sending you to hell. Okay, that's not what God is saying. Friends, let me tell you, no woman wants a husband like that either, you know. Either obey my commandments and obey my rules, uh, or, or I'm going to abandon you. <laughs> okay, no God wants, or no guy wants a woman like that either, you know. You either treat me the way I want to be treated, or I'm leaving you. You know, she's kind of like holding you hostage at that point. She's holding her love for you hostage. You see, God doesn't want to hold us hostage, okay? He gives us free will. God says, you can obey my commandments, or you can choose not to obey my commandments. You have a choice. You can accept me, or you can reject me. Your choice. But here's the thing. If you accept Jesus Christ as God, if you accept his commandments, you know, as his rules that he's given you, you know, it's just the same way if a woman accepts a man as a husband, she also must accept the rules that that man has given her, you know, to live by. And, the, and these rules, you know, these commandments that God gives us, they're not there to say, if you break them, we're getting a divorce. 
You know, God's going to reject you. You know, no. those rules that God gives us, the commandments he gives us are because he loves us. Because he knows that when we obey these commandments, we will be happier. We'll, we'll live our lives more fulfilling. And our relationship with God will be stronger. And it will prosper. Because that's what God wants. He wants us to have a relationship with him and love him. And we can love each other in this dynamic, you know. And, and, but what do we have with the feminist movement today? Women who believe that men in authority are sub somehow suppressing women just because they're in authority. So they want to be equal. You know, these same people believe that God is not an authority. God shouldn't be authority. And, and God, by giving us commandments, is somehow oppressing us. You know, what you guys need to realize is that, you know, Christianity... This book, the Holy Bible, the King James Bible, is the only religion, it's the only faith that will provide you 100% assurance that you will go to heaven when you die. Did you know that? It's the only religion. It's the only God that will guarantee you 100% that when you die, you will be resurrected from the dead. You'll go to heaven. You know, too many people falsely believe that, you know, they have to obey God's commandments to go to heaven, right? Look, they, that they have to be a good person to still be loved by God. Okay, to, to maintain God's grace, to be in God's grace and to have him bless you, that they, they, they must obey the commandments. See, when you, when you first put your faith in Jesus Christ, when you first believe on him in your heart, and you accept him as your Lord and Savior, you know, it's like a marriage is taking place. You're getting married to God. And God agrees. You know, he promises. He said his vow to us is say, I'm going to protect you. I'm going to take care of you. And, I, and I'm going to give you eternal life in heaven. And, he's, and, he, and, he vows, and he vows and makes this promise to you. That if you accept him in your heart, he will do this. And he's never going to hurt us. He's never going to lie to us. And, and we, we tell God, you know, we say, we're going to submit to you. We're, we're going to call you our Lord and Savior. And, and, and we are going to belong to you. We're going to uh, give our souls to you. And, and we're going to trust in you and put our faith and confidence in you that you're going to take care of us in this life and in the next life. And, and God... We're going to do your will. And we're going to follow your commandments and your rules. Okay? It's just like when you get married with a woman, your marriage is supposed to picture this same relationship between us and God. You know? It's supposed to be an unconditional love. A true love. And the woman has her responsibility to respect and obey her husband. Right? Just like we're supposed to respect and obey the Lord. And follow his commandments, you know, and give him honor. And, and the husband, he's supposed to love and take care of his wife and provide for her, just like God loves and takes care of us. So let me ask you, do you know any woman who would rather have a husband give her conditional love instead of unconditional love? I mean, do you know any woman who would like a man to tell her, hey, if you don't follow my rules, if you don't obey the commandments that I laid down in my house, I'm going to kick you out of my house, divorce you, and you can get out of here. Or do you think a woman wants a husband who's going to say, you know what, I vow to you that no matter what, I'm going to protect you and I'm going to love you. And take care of you. Now likewise, I want you guys to ask yourselves. What would you rather have? Would you rather have a woman who's going to stand behind you and vow to stay with you and faithful and loyal with you? No matter what? And respect you and submit to your authority? Or do you want a woman who's going to only love you 
so long as you're treating her the way that she feels like she wants to be treated at that moment. You decide. This is important because if you believe the Bible, if you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you put him on your pedestal, you need to understand that the commandments that he gives us in this book are not contractual. They're not a contract. It's not a conditional thing. Like, um, God does not believe in divorce. He's never, he, the Bible says, he will never leave thee or forsake thee. He's never going to leave you. If you accept him as your Lord and Savior, he will never leave you. No matter what. No matter what commandment you break. He will never leave you. He will never stop loving you. He will never divorce us. He will keep his promise forever. And what is his promise? His promise is everlasting life. He will always honor his promise and, and defend his vow. He's a man of his word. He's a God of his word. You know, that doesn't mean that he won't rebuke you. Okay? Don't get it, don't get it twisted. And, and he won't discipline you for when you disobey his commandments, right? But remember, his commandments are only there because he loves us and he wants what's best for us. You know, he creates those rules. He creates those commandments out of our best interest. You know, maybe, maybe we don't understand some of the commandments. Maybe we can't explain some of the commandments and we and we don't understand why God created them. You know, like like maybe you can't rationalize why a husband is supposed to provide for his wife or why a wife is supposed to submit to her husband. Maybe you don't understand that. But just like a child, you know, doesn't always understand why his parents tell him to don't go play out in the street or don't talk to strangers, you know. Maybe the child doesn't understand why the parents told him to do that. But just because you don't understand it doesn't mean that it's not for your best interest, okay? Now, this is why I made the video warning you guys not to put women on a pedestal, right? Because us humans, we don't know everything, okay? That's why we need to go to the scriptures. We need to go to God because we don't have infinite wisdom, but God does. He knows everything. He knows what's best for us. And he wrote us simple, basic commandments that we can follow. We can live our lives off of. That we can not only have a stronger, healthy relationship with our Lord and Savior, but we can also have a more happy and fulfilling life on this earth. You see, God knows what's best for us. He does. He knows what's best for us better than we do. I, I, I guarantee you. And, and these women of today think that they want to be our equals. <laughs> that they know what's best for them. You know, when God ordained us in this book, He ordained us to be an authority figure over our wives, over our women, you know? Not to rule over them and oppress them with an iron fist, but, but, but to protect them, to love them. You know, and we create rules in our household um, to help everything run smoother and lovingly, right? And I, and I know it's, it's really hard to love and care for your woman, you know, especially when she lashes out at you and, and, and she gets emotional and has these outbursts towards you and when she, even when she spits in your face and dumps you and, and, or, or she, maybe she cheats on you and, and divorces you and takes you for everything you have. But remember, you know, Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. You say, I don't understand how or why you can love somebody that treats you like that. How, how can I love somebody that treats me like that, Sean? Look, I'm not telling you guys that you should be a doormat, okay? I'm not telling you to let your wife get away with murder and just do whatever she wants, right? You know, for example, if your wife commits adultery on you and she sleeps and she goes and sleeps with another man or, you know, the Bible says if she divorces you and goes and marries another man, that's adultery, right? And we, we know from reading this book that the penalty for adultery is death. So, you know, if your wife divorces you, remarries, the Bible calls that adultery. 
Now, I know that society does not execute the death penalty. They do not respect God's laws. The society and culture we live in, you know, you can see it. Women are getting away with murder. They really are. They're, you know, they're divorcing their husbands on an unprecedented level and remarrying other men and sleeping around. And it is just so wicked because we're not following God's commandments. And we can see how it's destroying our lives. It's destroying society. And, you know, the women, they're getting away with it for now. For now, but God, but, but God will judge them. So don't worry too much about that. Shh. The women won't be able to escape from God. They may, es may escape from you. They may escape from the government. But they will not escape from God. God will make sure that all sin is punished in due time. Because God isn't punishing sin right now. At this moment, right? I mean, sometimes he probably does. And sometimes he doesn't. But don't think just because he's not punishing somebody right now that he's going to forget about it and he's going to let it go unpunished because remember, God isn't constrained and limited to time like we are. He doesn't have time constraints. He's eternal. He's outside of time. He's infinite. He has no beginning, no end. But I'm getting a little bit off track, so I got to get back on focus. What I want you guys to take from this video is that every single one of us has disobeyed at least one commandment in the Bible. And the Bible says the punishment of sin is death, for the wages of sin is death. And we're all going to die because of this sin. But Jesus, Jesus offers salvation through faith in his sacrifice on the cross, not through following commandments but through faith you know jesus lived and walked this earth he lived a perfect sinless life never once broke a commandment right never once sinned never once told a lie he was able to take our sins that we committed upon him because of this and he was able to die on the cross for us he was able to take the punishment that we deserve. You know, the Bible says that his soul descended into hell for three days and three nights. And what happened three days and three nights later? God raised him from the dead. He was resurrected out of the grave. He defeated and conquered death and ascended into heaven. And what did he promise us? He promised that if you believe in him, if you believe in your heart that he died for your sins, you get married to him. You get married to Jesus Christ and he becomes like your husband and you make him Lord of your life. And he promises to resurrect you from the dead and, and, and he can give that gift, that free gift of eternal life to you. You know, you, you don't have to obey his commandments to receive it. It's as simple as taking a drink of water. It's so good. It's so tasty. And Jesus promises that if, if, if you accept him, you know, like he just wants us to accept him. If you take his name, Jesus Christ, he will never leave thee or forsake thee. And he will take you to heaven when you die. You can be assured of this 100% that he will protect your soul and he will provide for your soul with life after you die. He will resurrect you from the dead. And, and you make him your God. You make him your husband. You submit to him and, 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 and you say, I will obey your commandments. Not because we're trying to keep the love, right? Not because he might take away his promise if we don't follow his commandments. No, no, no. We submit to him because we're thankful. Because he loves us unconditionally. And it's our way of saying thank you for your promise of eternal life. Thank you for what you do for me. Thank you for taking care of me. And we do this out of appreciation that we love him. We submit to him freely, voluntarily. Not because we're forced. Not out of coercion. 
Not because he's holding our love hostage. If you don't, if you don't obey my, obey my commandments, I, I'm going to take away my promise to you and I'm going to divorce you and send you to hell. No, that's not how God operates. I mean, if you don't believe in him, if you don't think he's powerful enough to resurrect you from the dead, then don't believe in him. Don't accept him as your Lord and Savior. Don't get married to Jesus Christ. It's your choice. If you don't think he has any authority over you and, and you don't want to obey his commandments and, and follow his rules, then you know what? Reject him. But he said he's going to reject you in the next life. And, and, and you can believe in some other God, okay? Because every other God out there operates, you better obey my commandments or else. The only God who operates in unconditional love is Jesus Christ. And he says, you know, he, I mean, the decision's yours, you know. You could either accept Jesus Christ's unconditional love or you can choose to be treated <laughs> the other way. If you don't obey my commandments and treat me the way I want, then to hell with you. Get out of here. And you can and you can join the devil in hell. Next. And and when you die, God's not gonna resurrect you. You know, you will not have everlasting unconditional love. And you can go out in the world and you can treat people just like that. Just like the, the God you believe in, who says, I have conditional love, you obey my commandments or else. So you decide. The decision's yours. But I know in my heart that my God, Jesus Christ, you know, he gives me so much peace in my heart and he gives me hope, you know, because it's so much more peaceful to love somebody than to reject them and throw them out. You know, I, I wouldn't want somebody treating me like that. I know the person that is treating me like that, I don't like it. Anyways, you know, that, that's my video. And I'm coming up on 37 minutes, but you know I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you were encouraged to um, love unconditionally, and you can see the difference between the two, and 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 understand that you know God does not require we obey the commandments to go to heaven. He simply gives us commandments out of love, so we can grow our relationships stronger, and. And we can live more happy and fulfilling lives because he knows what's best for us. He really does. And, and I remind you, love trumps hate. So whether you believe in it or not, whether you believe in unconditional true love or not, the truth is God loves you. He died for you and, and, and he will always accept you. Always. And, and if you fell away from him, if you fell out of love with God, he'll always accept you back. He'll always welcome you back. You know, believe it because it's true. Anyways, I'll leave you guys there. I love you guys. To all my subscribers, um, I'm going to continue to pray for you guys. That we all grow in the grace and, and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And, and we learn to love and love others as He has loved us. So, that's my video. Um, I'm going to give God the last word, as usual. And I'm going to read from... Um, the book of 1 John, chapter 4, verse 7 through 15. God bless you all. The Bible reads, 1 John, chapter 4, verse 7 through 14. It says, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. And every one that loveth is born of God, and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. In this was manifested the love of God towards us, because that God sent His only begotten Son into the world that we might live through Him. Herein is love, not that we loved God, but that He loved us. He sent His Son to be a propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. No man hath seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us, and his love is perfected in us. Hereby know we that we 
Hereby know we that we dwell in him, and he in us, because he hath given us his spirit. And he hath seen, and do testify, that the Father sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwelleth in him, and he in God. Amen.